In this lecture, we're going to examine an LCR electric circuit and we're going to look at what happens to our electric current over time inside an LCR electric circuit. So an LCR electric circuit is a circuit that contains a resistor, a capacitor, as well as an inductor. So let's suppose we have the following open electric circuit that contains an inductor with inductant L, a resistor with resistor resistance R and a capacitor with capacitance C. Now notice our switch is in the open position and that means no electric current will flow inside our LCR circuit and all the charge will be stored on the plates of our parallel plate capacitor. So in this lecture we essentially want to discuss how our electric current changes with respect to time once we close our switch. Now, before we actually close our switch and examine what takes place inside our LCR circuit, let's recall what takes place inside an LC electric circuit that contains no resistance. So let's suppose we have a fully charged capacitor with capacitance C and an inductor with inductance L. So once we close the following switch, an electric current begins to flow inside our electric circuit. In fact, the electric charge on the plates of the capacitor as well as the electric current inside our LC circuit begins to oscillate back and forth between two values sinusoidally in the same exact analogous way as a mass attached to a spring oscillates back and forth in simple harmonic motion when there is no friction. So because we have no resistance in the following LC electric circuit, our charge on the capacitor, our electric current inside the circuit, and the quantity of energy stored on the capacitor and inside the inductor will essentially oscillate back and forth sinusoidally in simple harmonic motion. But how exactly does the quantity of charge found on the capacitor and the electric current inside our LCR electric circuit change with respect to time? So let's begin by essentially closing the following switch and let's apply Kirchhoff's second rule. So Kirchhoff's second rule essentially tells us that if we go around the following closed loop, the sum of all the voltage differences will be zero. So let's begin at position one. So if we begin at position one and move across the following capacitor to position two, when we close the following uh, switch, there will be an increase in voltage given by Q, the charge on the capacitor, divided by C, as shown in the following equation. Now, when we go from position 2 to position 3, there will be a decrease in voltage, a drop in voltage, given by negative L di dt, where di dt is simply the rate of change of our current with respect to time, and L is the inductance on our inductor. Now when we go from position 3 back to position 1, back to our initial position, there is once again a drop in voltage given by negative i multiplied by r. And because we begin and end at the same exact position, this sum will equal zero. So this is our equation that is obtained using Kirchhoff's second rule. Now recall the definition of our electric current. The instantaneous electric current I is equal to negative of the rate of change of our electric charge with respect to time. So I is equal to negative dq divided by dt. So if we take the following equation, we can replace our I's with this derivative and we get the following equation. 
So, these negatives become positives, and we replace I's with DQ divided by DT. So, we have Q divided by C plus L, the second derivative of our charge with respect to time, plus the first derivative multiplied by R. So, let's take this equation and rearrange it into the following form. And let's call this equation, equation 1. Now, notice something interesting about the following equation. So, this equation describes the rate of change of our electric charge inside our capacitor when we close the following switch of our LCR electric circuit. And notice that this second order differential equation has the same exact form as that for damped harmonic motion. So that basically means because we have the following resistor which essentially acts as friction for simple harmonic motion, our oscillations will be damped. Now, from our lecture on damped harmonic motion, we were able to show that the solution of such an equation has the following form. So, this Q is equal to the following equation. So, Q naught e to the power of negative R divided by 2L times T of cosine omega prime T plus our phase angle phi. So, this basically means if we take this equation and replace Q's with this equation, we'll get our zero value. So, this is our solution to the following second order differential equation. Now, notice the t is the time in seconds, the phi is the phase angle, our omega prime has the following value. This is our angular frequency, so this is equal to the square root of 1 divided by LC minus R squared divided by 4L squared. Now, R is our resistance on the resistor, L is our, um, L is our inductance on the inductor. Uh, T is our time, and Q naught is simply the quantity of charge stored on the capacitor initially before we close our switch. So, once again, what exactly is the meaning of the following second order differential equation? So, we see that the charge, our electric current inside our LCR circuit, and ultimately the energy that is stored inside the capacitor and inside our inductor will undergo oscillations that will decrease, that will dampen over time. Now, depending on the values of R, L, and C, the electric current can decay inside the LCR circuit in three different ways. So we have under damp decay, over damp decay, and critical damp decay. Let's begin by discussing under damp decay. So when an under damp decay take pla takes place, we essentially have the following inequality. So R squared is less than 4L divided by C. Now, what exactly is the meaning behind this inequality? Well, let's divide both sides by 4L squared. We get the following result. So, this inequality tells us that R squared divided by 4L squared is less than 1 divided by L times C. Now, if we look at the following equation, we see that this inequality tells us that 1 divided by L times C is greater than R squared divided by 4L squared. So we see this quantity, this difference will be a positive value and so our angular frequency, our angular velocity omega prime will be a positive real number and that basically implies that our electric current decays with oscillations, with damped oscillations. Now, the second type of electric decay is known as an overdamped decay. So that implies that R squared is greater than 4L divided by C. Once again, we divide both sides by 4L squared, we get this result, and this inequality tells us 
that this is less than this. And so a smaller number minus a greater number gives us a negative value. And so we see in this case our angular frequency omega prime is an imaginary number. And so that implies that our electric current will decay, but it will decay very slowly and without any oscillations. And finally, let's examine electric current that decays via critical damping. So this implies that R squared is equal to 4L divided by C. We divide both sides by 4L squared. We get this equality. And so we see this is equal to this. And omega prime, our angular frequency, will equal to zero. And that basically implies that the electric current decays in the fastest amount of time without any oscillations. So in case two and three, no oscillations actually take place. In case one, we have oscillations taking place. So in case one, in the underdamped case, our electric current will experience damped oscillations.